Hi guys! I'm here to do a book haul actually. I know I did one a little while ago, like really recent, but I actually went to the bookstore quite a few times in the last couple weeks and I wanted to show you guys what I got. If you guys hear screaming, screeching, or yelling, my parents are watching a action movie that's really close to my bedroom actually, so if you hear anything along the lines of an action movie, just ignore it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to show you guys the, the books I got. I'm really excited about reading all of these books. A lot of them are new releases, a lot of them are 2011 debuts in the YA fiction genre. So if you are part of Story Sirens book challenge, stay tuned because I mentioned two books in particular that can go towards this challenge. So yeah, thank you for watching, thank you to all my new subscribers, and I hope you enjoy. The first book I'm going to show you guys is Delirium by Lauren Oliver. And if you guys didn't know, you guys probably do know, but she wrote, but she wrote um, Before I Fall as well, which looks like this. So yeah, same author. I've not read this one, Before I Fall, yet. I was totally excited to hear how great this book was, so I decided to give it a try. I love the cover, and this is, synopsis sounds great as well. The, um, the flap is gorgeous as well, I love the color. But the hardcover is actually a picture of the girl behind the words. So if you can see this, um, the, the, the picture of her face behind the words, it's the same girl on the hardcover. So the in cover, inside cover says, 95 days and then I'll be safe. I wonder whether the procedure will hurt. I want to get it over with. It's hard to be patient. It's hard not to be afraid. While I'm still uncured, though so far the deliria hasn't touched me yet. Still, I worry. They say that in the old days, love drove people to madness. The deadliest of all deadly things. It kills you both when you have it and when you don't. And then on the back it says, They say that the cure for love will make me happy and safe forever. And I've always believed them until now. Now everything has changed. Now I'd rather be infected with love for the tiniest sliver of a second than a hundred years smothered by a lie. This sounds amazing. It's not very straightforward, so you're going to have to read it to find out. Um, the meaning behind those words. This book I got is The Demon Trapper's Daughter and this is a 2011 YA debut which can be put towards the Story Sirens book challenge. So this seems like a really great book. I really like the cover. I think it's really cool. So I'm gonna read the synopsis for you guys. It says that 17 year old Riley, the only daughter of a legendary demon trapper, Paul Blackthorn, has always dreamed of following in her father's footsteps. The good news is with human society seriously disrupted by economic upheaval and Lucifer increasing the number of demons in all major cities, Atlanta's local Trapper's Guild needs all the help it can get, even from a girl. When she's not keeping up with her homework or trying to manage her growing crush on a fellow apprentice, Simon, Riley is out saving distressed citizens from foul-mouthed little devils, grade one hell spawn only, of course, per the strict, per the strict rules of the Guild. Life's about as normal as it can get, for the average demon trapping teen. But then a grade 5 geo find crashes Riley's routine assignment at a library, jeopardizing her life and her chosen livelihood. And as if that wasn't bad enough, suddenly tragedy strikes the Trapper's Guild, spinning Riley down a more dangerous path than she could have ever imagined. As her whole world crashes down around her, who can Riley trust with her heart and her life? So I love the synopsis of that. There has not been too many books that I've read about demons and kind of along the lines of the devil so this sounds awesome and of course it's a YA so if you're interested this is what it looks like and it is by Jana Oliver. I got these two books recently actually. I got Finding Sky by Joss Sterling and I was really attracted to the cover of this book. I think it's really pretty and the synopsis is really short so I didn't know whether to get this or not because it does sound really cliche but I actually read some really good reviews on it. So hopefully it will turn out great. On the back it says, You have half our gifts, I have the other. When English girl Skye catches a glimpse of bad boy Zed in her new American high school, she can't get him out of her head. He talks to her with his thoughts. He reads her mind. He is the boy she will love forever. Shadows stalk her past, but a new evil threatens her future. Skye must face the dark, even if it means losing her heart. So obviously that synopsis is along the lines of the typical mysterious guy at a new school and a girl falls in love with him but I decided to give this a chance because I just thought that it would turn out different. There's something about this that made me think that something will be different about it and that it will be unique in a sense. 
So hopefully this turns out good. Um, like I said, I love the cover and I'm really excited to see what this is actually about and what the plot has that makes it different than any other book there is out there right now. The next book I got is Haven, which is a um, YA debut of 2011, so this can, this can be uh, put towards the Story Sirens book challenge. The cover is really pretty, it's called Haven by Christy Cook and it has to do with psychic abilities in a school that is filled with students who all share the same ability to read each other's mind. Uh, I don't know what the butterfly has to do with it, but it's, an, it's a theme. So I'm going to read you the inside cover. It says that Violet doesn't understand why she feels drawn to the Winter Haven School. She just knows it's the right place for her. When she discovers the school's secret, it all makes sense. Everyone at Winter Haven has psychic, has psychic gifts. For the first time in her life, Vi Violet doesn't have to hide her visions. She's always seen them as a curse, but now she can hone her ability and try to control it. But she's thrown completely off balance when she meets the most alluring and most mysterious boy in school. She's never connected with anyone the way she does with Aiden, and the intensity takes them both by surprise. But as the relationship deepens, she begins to have visions of Aiden's death, and sees that she's the one who's fated to kill him. Violet's never been able to prevent her visions from coming true, but this time she'll do whatever it takes, even if it means sacrificing herself for the boy she loves. Um, I love that synopsis. I have not read a lot of books with psychic abilities, but I have read my sh I have read a couple, but this one looks especially good. Obviously, there's some romance involved, so we'll see how this goes. I'm really looking forward to reading this. I heard some great things about it. Yay! <laughs> I'm so excited for this book. Um, and this is a sequel to Inside Out by Maria V. Snyder, and this one is Outside In. Um, the first book, which I just mentioned, is an all-time favorite of mine, and I've been dying to get my hands on a copy of this. It felt like I've been waiting forever, and I'm dying to read this. I'm going to read this after I finish a different book I'm reading right now. So, um, definitely check this series out. I'm not going to tell you what this is about, because it will give away some major spoilers. So, anyway, yeah, this is what the sequel looks like. It's a very cool cover. And the first one looks like this. So, side by side, you will see. Very cool, cohesive series, and I love that it's paperback and not hardcover because I feel like they look really cool together um, as paperbacks. And definitely check this book out, you will not regret it. The next book I'm going to show you is Angel by James Patterson. This is the seventh book in the Maximum Ride series, and I've been dying to read this, so I'm going to start it next. This is an awesome series, it's definitely one of my favorites. It's about a flock of kids who can fly pretty much and they've been genetically altered since they were kids and they've been living in labs. So the series starts off with a book called The Angel Experiment and this is the seventh book. Really looking forward to reading this. Not going to tell you what it's about because it will give things away and the first book to the seventh book is such a huge journey and so much happens so definitely check it out. Hopefully this, turns, this one turns out good. I know that there's many more installments after this, so hopefully this k keeps up the pace. The next book I got was Crusade by Nancy Holder and Debbie Vigge, Vigge? Vigge? I don't know how to pronounce that. So there are vampires involved and there's kind of like an academy vampire school involved as well, so I'm going to read you the inside cover. For the past two years, Jen has lived and trained at Spain's Sacred Heart Academy against the Cursed Ones. She is among the few have, who have pledged to defend humanity or die trying. But the vampires are gaining power and the battle has only just begun. Forced to return home after death takes a member of her family, Jen discovers that San Francisco is now a vampire stronghold. As a lone hunter, a part of her team, Jen is isolated and at risk. She craves the company of her fighting partner, Antonio, his protection, his reassurance, his touch. But a relationship with Antonio comes with its own dangers, and the more they share of themselves, the more Jen stands to lose. Then Jen is betrayed by the one who was once bound to protect her, causing her to doubt all she has held true. To survive, Jen must find the courage to trust herself and her heart. So I really like the sound of that. I'm not a huge fan of the cover. But because the synopsis sounded so good, I decided to give it a try. And I'm really looking forward to reading this, and I will let you guys know how I like it. Next book I got was High Society by Ali Carter. And I've been having my eye on this book for a while. I didn't know whether to get it or not. But I've heard some uh, great reviews about this, so I decided to give it a try. 
Um, I've never really read a book like this before, but it sounds really good. The inside cover says, For her 17th birthday, Katarina and her uncle Eddie traveled to Aust Austria to steal the crown jewels. When Kat turned 15, she planned a con of her own, scamming her way into the best boarding school in the country, determined to leave the family business behind. Unfortunately, leaving the life for a normal life proves harder than she expected. Soon, Kat's friend and former co-conspirator, Hale, appears out of nowhere to bring her back into the world she tried so hard to escape. But he has a good reason. A powerful mobster's priceless art collection has been stolen and he wants it returned. Only a master thief could have pulled this job off, and Kat's father isn't just on the suspect list. He is the list. Caught between Interpol and a far more deadly enemy, Kat's dad needs her help. For Kat, there is only one solution. Track down the paintings and steal them back. So what if it's a spectacularly impossible job? She's got two weeks, a teenage crew, and hopefully just enough talent to pull off one of the biggest heists in her family's very crooked history. And with any luck, steal her life back along the way. So I thought that sounded really awesome. I haven't really read a book along the lines of this, and I think the whole aspect of the... Um, the stealing and the mystery behind that's really cool and I really do look forward to reading this. The next book is a 2011 YA debut and this can be put toward the challenge as well. This sounds really cool. I do look forward to reading this. The cover is very pretty. It is Vesper by Jeff Sampson. I love the synopsis of this so I'm going to get right into it and read it to you guys. Emily Webb is a geek and she's happy that way. Content hiding under hoodies and curling up to watch old horror flicks, she's never been the kind of girl who seeks out for midnight parties. And she's definitely not the kind of girl who starts fights or flirts with other girls' boyfriends. Until one night, Emily finds herself doing exactly that. The same night one of her classmates, also named Emily, is found mysteriously murdered. The thing is, Emily doesn't know why she's doing any of this. By day, she's the same old, boring Emily, but by night, she turns into a thrill seeker. With every nightfall, Emily gets wilder until it's no longer just her personality that changes. Her body can do things it never could do before. Emily is now strong, fast, and utterly fearless. And soon, Emily realizes that she's not just coming out of her shell. There's something much bigger going on. Is she bewitched by the soul of the other murdered Emily? Or is Emily Webb becoming something else entirely? Something not human? As Emily hunts for answers, she finds out that she's not the only one this is happening to. Some of her classmates are changing as well. Who is turning these teens into monsters? And how many people will they kill until they get what they want? So this sounds really, really cool, really different. I definitely look forward to reading this. It's definitely one of those books that puts a spin on so many books out there. So it will be the change that I look for once in a while. So that was my haul. I hope you guys enjoyed that. It's quite a few books and I really look forward to reading all of them. Thank you for watching. I will talk to you guys later.